Okay, everyone, what's going on? Welcome uh, to the Midweek Strategy Webinar. I'm Jamie Setley here. It is June 3rd, 2015, and uh, going to begin here. So, quite a couple days for the euro against the dollar, uh, dollar in general, I guess, uh, but the euro in particular, especially when you consider uh, today's move on top of what happened yesterday. So as was fairly widely publicized uh, yesterday uh, through media outlets and, and others, you had a euro dollar move. It was the largest since March 18th of this year, right, which is the Fed day. Um, and the second largest since July 1st, 2010. So really the second biggest move that we've had in the euro um, in one day in, in the last five years. And when you put today's move on top of it, what I want to do is actually show you what the two-day rate of change looks like. And that gives us a sense for possibly understanding something even even bigger what's what's next right so we have a three percent move over the last two days okay um, that is the largest two-day rally going back you have to go back a while going back to March of 2009 okay so that is uh, over six years ago, the largest two-day rally, and we were uh, lucky enough, I guess, to catch all of it, um, and a little more than that because we were actually long on Monday too. So, and I say lucky because the stop, if you remember, the stop was missed by one pip <laughs> on that trade. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so if you look back, you know, to these extreme moves over a, you know, several day period, first of all, context is key here, right? Because in order to get these huge moves, look, it's not, it, it takes like a perfect storm to get something like this in two to three days. Um, you've got to have a market that's caught really off guard. Okay. Um, you know, Orderly markets don't just move, FX doesn't just move like 3% in two days. That doesn't happen. Okay, so uh, in order for that to happen, as, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm saying here, is you've got to have a market that's really on the wrong side. In other words, this really is a short covering move. I mean, we don't really care why it is what it is. We care that we're, that we're able to, to, to make money from it. Um, but that's what it is. And, you know, it might have further to go. Um, you know, for instance, you know, if we look at some of the big short covering moves that we've had, I mean, this one I remember um, back in, in March of, eight, of 2009, I was actually trading that as well. Um, but this was a Fed day as well. I remember that, March of 2009. And you had uh, a similar move in December of 2008, which was even bigger. And this really is what I mean by the, how big a short covering move can get. All right. Um, when we had a short covering move back in, in, in 2008, in that December, remember that was after, after the financial crisis. Um, and that move really, you know, that took us from over the course of, you know, a week, basically. Uh, we went from 127 to 140, so we went 2,000 pips. Okay, so <clears throat> um, Sam Deep asking question, do you mean euro generally or just the euro dollar pair? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, I mean, the euro in general, you know, as you guys have known, watching these videos, I started turning bullish on the euro, uh, you know, across the crosses really several weeks ago. Um, in the euro dollar itself a little more recently, but uh, the point I want to get across with this 3% move in two days here is that, 
you know, if we consider what's what's happened over the last year in the euro, okay, basically the biggest trend, the fastest um, over this period of time that we've had, uh, you know, such a sizable move. Um, you know, it's obviously quite possible that we get much more upside in the euro. Okay. As the market's really caught off guard, I don't think it's going to be unwound with two days. I think it's probably going to take more like a couple weeks. So I still want to be long the euro, right? Um, but we don't, you know, we're going to find a, a spot to get in over the, the next, you know, one to two days here to get back in, I should say, with good reward to risk. Um, that's the name of the game. Uh, so, yeah, looking back to December 2008, we did have, you know, a 2000 pip run over the course of a little over a week. Uh, and that was really the unwind of this move. OK. Um, of the financial crisis move. Right. The euro move and that retraced just a little over 61.8 percent ended at the 200 day average. In fact, this move right now. I think is the beginning of all of, of a similar unwind. And if we look at retracement levels, um, we got 50% at 122.27, the 618s at 18.14, that six or that, sorry, that 200 day average, I mean, is it, is it 18.14? That really is interesting because you've got two equal legs at 18.22. So that 18, uh, 118 handle might be really interesting. Um, at some point as a target level here fairly soon. All right. Okay. So I just want to start off with that. Uh, let's go through the, you know, the, as I did like kind of like the way we did it last week, uh, I went through basically the, the weekend levels, right? And if you go back to the Monday post uh, or the sun, really the Sunday post, I guess, May 31st post, I'll start doing this each Sunday. I think some of you guys found it helpful. Uh, at least that's what I was, I was told. Um, that uh, put up these levels on Sunday kind of for, for the, they're meant really for the week ahead. Okay. Uh, some of the big levels to, that I think are worth paying attention to. So let's just kind of go through that and update and see how those are doing. Um, so, okay. Euro, here's a Euro chart. This is updated Euro chart, obviously. It's a little different than the one, but I think this slope is something we might actually be working with for a while. Um, you know, just like we had the slope last year, that bear slope off the this one that you see here, the down one, right? I actually think that we could be working with this uptrending slope, this one here, for quite a while too. So I don't want to obviously make note of that. Uh, but we had 109.2040 as support, got a little freaky there because we did go down to 108.86. But in general, uh, looking for a low seemed to be the right idea. Uh, looked at 112 as resistance, this parallel. Uh, I did not think in my wildest dreams that we'd get up to 112.70 this quickly, but hey, we have, so that's great. For, but from here, uh, 112, well, where we are now, basically 112.70 to 113.10, this area, okay, could cause some issues. Um, for support now, for Euro, I think where we're going to want to look, and again, As I noted last night with the Aussie, you might actually want to put up like a 24 hour moving average or something. Um, but this, it looks a little bit different than the intraday, but this pitchfork, which was resistance here, uh, yesterday. Okay. That more or less look for that to become support. And you can see this, you know, structure off these, uh, mini, low here uh, last week, actually, on the 27th, the high here on the 29th, the low uh, on June 1st, which is that 86 area. Uh, we're going to be looking for that slope, I think, to provide support as well. And that really could be anywhere from, you know, the 1180s into the 1150s. So, you know, 1180, 1150, I think. Ideally, this morning's low remains in place at 110.75, so we might be looking to trade into 111.50 or so um, with a stop at 110.75 for additional, you know, shore covering or whatever you want to call it. 
Um, at least that's, you know, what I'm kind of thinking right now. We'll see if it plays out that way. You know, obviously, if the, the euro comes off from here, and again, it's a good reaction level. Uh, we've at least paused here. But if it comes off, we're not going to want to see it, like, plunge necessarily. We kind of want to see, you know, a slow drifter, maybe, over the course of a day, day and a half, into the 1150s. And then, uh, you know, basically a corrective decline, right? And then, and then we'll be looking to get uh, to get long again. So, one eleven fifties to eighties. I kind of mark that down as a level of interest. And again, you might want to take a look as I, I focus it, but with the with the uh, with the moving averages, you know, again, a t I'm not a big indicator guy, as you, as you know, but you know, a few simple tools can really can really help you out. And you know, a moving average, like a 24 hour for a strong trend, 24 hour moving average. 120 day moving or 120 hour moving average, one day, five days, right? Okay, when you get a big break like we've had, really since the since the crossover, uh, we really haven't had a, uh, you know, we've had well the test this morning of the moving average, but we haven't had like a touch and go off of it. So you might want to watch for that on the on the 24 hour moving average, and you can kind of see like look at the previous bull move that we had, right? Um, in the in the euro, okay during the very strong trends, right? You can see how this thing rides a 24, basically hour moving average, okay? Kind of rides it, right? Um, you can kind of see how it rides it during the initial advance that we had as well. This was after 318, but once we got back above it, kind of rode it again. So you might want to pay attention to something like that, just a little tip. Um, Looking at the, we'll move on now to the pound. Let's see here. Pound dollar. All right. Here's the pound. Okay. So pound dollar uh, came in looking two levels, 151.25, 151.90. We got the low. Give you a candle chart. We got the low here, uh, it was 51.69, so pretty close. 53.70 was the next resistance, uh, hit 53.74 today and pulled back sharply, okay? Um, and then the big level that I'm really interested in is, I, you know, as I, as I wrote, I think in the weekend uh, long-term charts page, is the 154.40, 154.50 area. And that, as mentioned, is a high volume level. Okay, it's the level from the election gap right here. That would be this close, 5.8. Um, and it, it, on Friday, it intersects um, the upper parallel. Okay, basically just a trend line off the structure if you want to draw it and extend the line from the low. So we'll be looking there. Now, there is, uh, I think, BOE tomorrow. I don't really know if anything's expected to happen. Usually nothing does there. But in any case, you want to note that you've got um, 54.70 or so is where the upper parallel is tomorrow. And guess what? It's also that long-term sliding parallel, right? Really long-term uh, that we've had uh, for quite some time. And, you know, we topped at it in February. We were supported by it before the big breakdown earlier in the year. Um, so you're going to want to note that, you know, I'll put this in today's post, of course, but 5470 is a really big level for tomorrow. Uh, and for Friday, again, it is 54.40. And if you look at the short-term picture for pound, it lines up pretty well, right? Here's that same slope. Okay, here's that same red line. And again, it's on Friday up here. But if we do work higher from here now, which is a distinct possibility given... How the, how the, you know, how things of the dollars kind of turned, turned down. Um, you know, we could get a move up into two equal legs at 54, 54, and it, it is the pound, so we might overshoot, but in general, 54, 40 to 54, 70 over the next two days is an interesting level to take, you know, uh, a spot for pound to go into and, and potentially fail. Okay. If it gets much above, obviously, the, uh, upper parallel here, the short term one, and quite obviously, if it fails, you know, if it breaks through it, then you're not going to want to probably be short the pound. But, um, you know, it, pound's been acting pretty crappy across some of the crosses. So uh, if there is a place to potentially 
short the dollar at some point, or sorry, buy the dollar at some point, it might be against the pound up near 54.70 or even 54.40. Uh, Aussie dollar. We were looking at going into the week wrote just now, so now and uh, 75.90, and opened up that uh, week here right there down on Monday, and then low 75.97. Then obviously and just crazy rip. We're looking at 78 resistance. Um, I'll get to everyone. I will get to questions here in a moment. I just want to go through and update on the, the bigger levels here. Okay, so. Uh, like Aussie up, you know, 78, 78, 50 resistance seem to have gotten into the lower zone of that. Uh, I still like the long side uh, as we came into the week looking for this basically critical support. We have held it. So with the short term stuff, continue to watch. Um, well, this is the chart I put up last night, right? Yes, this one. So continue to watch, you know, we have a 7710 order. I doubt that gets triggered here today. Um, but we now have a pretty good looking impulse on the upside. So what might end up happening is we could end up getting long closer to 7685, which would be a confluence of the 50% retracement as well as the median line. Um, and that would be tonight, that intersects tonight in Asia. I'm not sure if there's any big news expected tonight. For Aussie, it's been a, a week full of news for Aussie. There is trade balance tonight. I don't know and retail sales. So you know, maybe we do. Maybe it comes in terrible and the Aussie tanks and just support and for a for a, a wave too low of some sort. It's a possibility. Um, so focus there. Kiwi, you know, really is on the precipice here. I mean. We came in again, basically saying support, bit like now, as in right when we opened the week. We have rallied. It's a big move yesterday as the dollar took it on chin. But again, um, you know, we failed here at pretty decent resistance. So, you know, we're long from uh, more or less now, 71.30, 71.37 now. Stop is really tight, and it's a small position. So see, you know, if this thing wants to turn up. If it does, we'll target the upper parallel up near 73.20. Um, if not, then, well, Kiwi might just be done for. And on that note, I'll look at some Kiwi setups on crosses like Kiwi Yen, for example, which might actually be due for that breakdown that we've been, uh, kind of looking for, for, for a while. Um, what else do we want to look at here? Obviously dollar yen. Yesterday, big, uh, outside day reversal. Okay, at very long-term support, or sorry, long-term resistance from that upper parallel. Uh, you can see there crossing almost perfectly. Uh, we do have a short order. It looks like oh, it has not been hit. It could be hit here in the next few minutes. It's trading 124.39. Uh, we have an order at 45. Again, small position, half a position is what I want to go for. For those of you unclear, uh, for me, I do a full position is five times leverage. Uh, and a uh, half position is two and a half times leverage. So quite two times position would be 10 times leverage. Um, and as most of this, that's in order to, you know, you don't, you want to get rid of all the variables, as many variables as possible when you're trading because, uh, you want to be able to, you know, not think about too much, you know, when you execute. So that's how I do it. Since this is definitely, picking a top and going against momentum, and so is Kiwi dollar, um, they're smaller positions. Okay, that's just kind of the way I've done it, but we'll see. Um, well, actually, the dollar yen is a normal is a normal trade, actually, five to one, So, but it's a small stop. All right, um, dollar yen. Dollar yen, euro pound, since posting last week, uh, the out posting this outside day and and whatnot at the big support it's rallied every single day it's a huge move euro pound 70 63 daily reversal support probably going for at least 7385 um, that would be you know potential resistance so we'll see 7385 to potentially uh, the upper parallel up here near 7420 again euro pound may very well have 
uh, huge upside over the next several months up into uh, the 76 plus area. Okay. And that is, you know, if you scroll way back, this is a weekly chart. If you scroll way back, Euro pound, you've got a confluence um, in July, August, uh, up near 76. Um, and again, that's, you know, we're trading 73.40 right now in Euro pound. So, you know, that's uh, 250 points away. But remember, you got to multiply that by one and a half because they're pound pips. So there is a decent amount of upside in Euro pound. On a swing basis. Okay. Euro yen has just gone through the roof. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I, some of you might have held on to the trade. Um, I was out at 35.75, unfortunately. Um, and then it came back and tested and continued higher. But the idea uh, in the structure seems to be, seems to be right. I want to point out actually that the you see how we've surged through this upper parallel, right? Which was obviously pretty good resistance before. So you look for that to become support now. In fact, on the downside, we did the same thing back in uh, we were shorting up here, if you remember, and then getting out way too soon. But um, same thing, okay? That this is like the opposite of over here uh, in January of 2015. Or January fifteenth, two thousand fifteen, which was the Swiss Swiss SMB day. So, if this market, you know, like we had here, we tanked, came back, the line acted as resistance more or less again. Okay, so if we continue higher here, we've got the sixty one eight of the whole decline. The year's range at one forty seventy three. Um, you know, if we pull back from up there, then we'll watch for support on this line, which was old resistance. Again, the concept of support and resistance applies uh, not just to horizontal, okay, but old resistance becoming support is a huge part of slope analysis uh, and to be quite useful. So, you know, we might be able to try to get back on board Euro Yen, uh, pull back into this level, okay? And finally, Euro Aussie, which is actually getting pretty close. Um, Getting pretty close to a big, big confluence. Okay, it's basically 4550 to 4590. 4590 is two equal legs from the low, 4587 to be specific. 4550 is more or less where the confluence is between all these uh, parallels and whatnot. Okay, so getting really close. Early week trade. Super sloppy, right? With all the event risk and whatnot, market did trade down to 142. We were looking for 42.3070 support, um, so we did go uh, through down through the support a little bit. But again, looking uh, for a pretty decent uh, reaction, I would think up near 45.50, 45.90. Okay. All right. So that's just a quick update on the levels. Um, you know, I think the thing to take away from it is obviously is that the euro. You know, the euro remains, in my opinion, uh, you know, and in the market's opinion, on the up and up. And that brings me to how to look at news, right? So, you know, if you just go to Google and type in euro, you get a real, you know, you can read the news headlines and you get a good uh, sense for, for what, what the uh, masses are thinking, right? What sentiment is out there. Um, and this was super interesting this morning. I did it as it came in. And, you know, you can see it's published nine hours ago. So this is published before today's rally, right? And there's an article from CNBC. It says, despite surge, the euro is still a sell. Okay. Now, the point is not about the content of this article or whether it's going to be right longer term. The point is when it's written, the near term, uh, implications because when a reporter writes something like that they're obviously comfortable writing it they would never write that if the euro was actually a sell okay if it was you know if it was you know you wouldn't see this at a near near a price top is my point very unlikely um 
So the fact that no one's so-called, you know, literally buy, no one's really buying this idea that the euro could possibly rally anymore. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's still a lonely place to be is, in my opinion, a pretty good indication that there's some more upside left in the euro. And again, I'm not saying we don't pull back into 111.50, which would be almost 150 pips off the high. OK, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Um, I'm saying that, you know, the trade, you know, there's still plenty of upside potential, uh, you know, in, in, in the euro. So, um, you know, one way to kind of read the new, right? All right. Um, let's see. This goes to the point as well. You know, when you talked about it in the um, in the weekend piece, the weekend charts, but you know, the sentiment extreme that we had in news headlines. Okay, euro tumbles to one month low. The dollar is going crazy. Those are the headlines that we saw. Those are the headlines that we saw right here one day before we got what's proven to be a pretty darn important low. Okay. Yesterday, when we had this, we were getting headlines like this. Spite surge. Okay. It would be different if the sentiment you'd read it a little differently if it said Euro surges and it's likely to continue higher. That would be kind of a screaming sell, right? But that was not the case, um, you know, and instead the markets continued higher. So, you know, I think that we look for, again, we look for support now on this old resistance line, which was resistance here, got a dip, all right? And as it is tomorrow, that line's like about 111.40, um, which is a pretty good spot, okay, to look for support. You've also got, you can see you've got stuff over there, lows and stuff over here, it's like 111.30, but get the idea, 111.30.50. So that might be really where we're honing in on the long side for the euro again. All right. Um, you want to see a cool chart? This is a cool chart. So this is the ICE dollar index, and I've followed this dollar index as well as the U.S. dollar, right? One word. Um, you know, it's uh, Sandeep actually here is a good question. He goes basically the opposite of the analysis. LOL. Well, well, not look, not necessarily. I don't mean to bag on the media. That's not the point. My, there's an art to reading the headlines, though, right? And you have to think it's and it's really it's just the headline, really. It's not even about the freaking what's written in there necessarily. It's really about how they were the headline. You got to remember everything these days is about click, 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 right? Okay. Everyone wants to get clicks. That's the whole freaking deal. It's sad, but it's, it's true. So, you know, they're going to write, they're confident in writing. A reporter is confident in writing, you know, that the euro ripped higher, but I'm willing to fade it basically because it's not going to go any higher, right? So when, a reporter says that you can bet that's probably the reflection of the general population, or, you know, the mass, the masses, if you will, right? And as we know, markets usually don't reward that uh, the masses very often. So, um, you know, that the fact that more or less they're willing to fade it is kind of tells us that we should continue to move a little higher. And, you know, we did. Uh, we'll see what happens today. Maybe there'll be headlines today that say, like, Euro continues surge and is likely to continue further. If that were the case, then I'd be like, well, we're probably going to get a decent sized pullback. OK. Um, and you might be a little more careful on dipping back into the euro longs at that point. So, you know, that's all I'm saying. It's not. It, first of all, there's don't there's not always something to get from it. Right. It's not always like you can't get it every day. But when, after you have a big move like that, it is interesting and helpful to see what the media says. And if there's headlines that stick out, because it, sometimes they'll tell you if it's better to stay with the position like this. In this case, it did. Or if it's better to just get out, you know, if they're all believing it. OK. All right. So anyway, here's the ice dollar index. And this was a, a, a fork, if you will. 
um, that was, you know, I mean, it was pretty useful as far as providing reference points. Um, you know, we had sliding parallels, for example, that provided support. Here. Okay. So we had all these levels of support and whatnot, but um, the, the basically old resistance, I'm sorry, old support here became resistance up here at the top. So that's a big deal. Okay. Um, it could be a long way down for the dollar at this point. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, does it happen from like today? I don't know. Um, but something to track and potentially keep us on, uh, you know, the right side of the trade here, hopefully. Um, let's look at pound. I had a question. Look at pound a little more in depth. I'll get to the questions from Bernard here. Has a question about the S and P. Um, S and P is just churning, 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 man. Chin Tan asking about pound yen, pound Aussie. Yeah, well, once pound yen didn't like do what I thought it was going to do, like once it stopped here, right? Once this resistance never really became good resistance, I kind of have put it on the back burner at this point. Um, but look, I like this. I still like the pound yen downside potential. But as far as the trade, I just don't have the setup right now. You know, it could end up being that we get short dollar yen uh, and then end up getting short pound dollar at a later time, you know, close to the upper parallel. And then in effect would put you short pound yen anyway. So don't have a whole lot to look at as far as pound yen is concerned. But pound Aussie is really interesting. Uh, start with a weekly chart. Okay. And I'll throw RSI on there because so RSI again look at the closing price of RSI to make sure that you do indeed have a higher price high and we and we did so higher price high in RSI a pretty uh, nasty divergence on the weekly chart Okay, and that's with both RSI at the price at both price highs, both RSI is below um, 70, which is a good sign as far as momentum really petering out. And the second peak RSI is actually below 65, so you know, telling us that this thing's really kind of you know done what it's going to do at this point. It might be completely over. Um, and then if we look at the slope analysis okay it's been the market it's, it's been a, a weak uptrend really um, you know since last uh, was it last September all right and what what I mean by that is you can see the move up off this line here um, we never made it to the median line okay never made it in fact if you draw the you know, the, the sliding parallel off this high, you didn't get there this time. You did get there this time. This last peak that we had last week, obviously nowhere close to this point. Okay. Uh, and now we're testing pretty big support. So you basically got one, two, three, a whole bunch of weeks of support here. Uh, you know, looks like we're going to try to break. It didn't. New price high. Now this market is absolutely primed for a breakdown. And, uh, you know, probably the first big support, you'd be looking at the median line. And this stretches back to 2012. So this goes back a long ways. And that first level, uh, you know, puts you pretty close to 183. So it's like 1,300 pips, 1,400 pips on the downside from where we are right now. When I go to a daily chart, okay, if you draw this fork, using the high from February, the low from March, and the high from May, you get this slope and you can see how wonderfully defined the median line is. In fact, 
it even cut through this gap. That's very significant, right? When you have significant things happening around the median line, uh, not just support and resistance, but also gaps, that tells you that you have, you know, what's likely a uh, important slope or, you know, the right, a right, a correct slope to work with. Um, if you were to end up drawing, I don't have it drawn because you don't need to, but if I were to end up having this drawn from here to here to here, it's the same slope. Okay, it just cuts right through the middle here. So we just draw a sliding parallel off of this high, and we don't really need that other one anyway. So we're coming into support now. Um, you know, maybe a little lower, maybe like 195.60. You know, you could look if you want it to be a uh, shorter term here, you could look to trade long in the 95.60 for recovery. Um, but at some point, you know, we're going to want to look to identify uh the, sh the bigger short opportunity here okay i mean we're in short term support so i'm envisioning we come down here bounce a little bit for a couple days and then absolutely fall apart you can see uh here's an hourly chart now right and you can see we're you know starting off the decline with a pretty nice looking impulse right five waves one two one two three four maybe five maybe this is wave four okay uh, get a little resistance up here near 97.50, wave four, new low wave five into the mentioned support area down here at 95, uh, you know, 95.50, 95.60. Okay, decline fifth wave and then a recovery high, recovery in three waves, which takes us back towards, maybe takes us back towards this upper parallel, maybe back into the 98.70 area. Okay, to 99.10, and that's where we'd eventually be shorting. So this is on the radar as a bigger, a much bigger opportunity to short. Uh, but again, if you are trading this over the next few days, you could get opportunity. You could get an opportunity to uh, buy into uh, you know these you know kind of initial wave wave one lows, if you will, into 95.50.60. Um, so that's where we are there. Uh, other crosses that could be really interesting. Again, I don't know if Kiwi is going to continue lower or not. I mean, you know, I posted that that monthly chart, which is, here it is. It's absolutely, you know, it's pretty wild, right? This is a monthly chart. Um, we're at giant, giant, giant slope, uh, you know, slope level here. And, you know, we are looking for a bounce up to at least, 73 area and if we got that you know maybe we could turn bearish again kiwi up there because that would kind of be your inflection point um you know but as it is right now i'm just not sure so i want to have other options with kiwi and kiwi yen obviously is one that uh published some time ago we tried to get or well, we did get short we got stopped out a couple weeks ago um as i thought you know maybe the break was on but it wasn't and again we have Here's the really long-term slope, and we have what could be a very large head and shoulders pattern, uh, you know, going back over a year. And if this is the case, again, think about the two legs, Kiwi and then Dollar Yen. So if Dollar Yen, which is a huge resistance, you know, can can shock the world and not go up anymore, then we're going to have a, a pretty big drop in Kiwi Yen. And that's why I'm following this in the short term. Follow this this fork here, right? You can see the high from the 23rd of March, the low from April 1st, and the high from April 22nd. Um, you know, it's been, you know, kind of, this is when we broke down here, okay, and then we were looking for a, a retest of that. We got short at 88.68, and then it came down, and then it ripped right through. So uh, it might be ready again as the markets basically churn sideways. Uh, for the last, well, almost four, almost three weeks. Okay, so we'll be watching resistance up here. Um, you know, maybe, what's this high? 89.40. 89.40 comes in early next week. Okay, very short term, still supported 88.40. Okay, but we'll be watching for resistance on this line in Kiwi Yen. All right. Uh, finally, wanted to look at, I, I touched on it last night, but might the dollar Turkish lira be 
announcing its intentions uh, ahead of time. So last year, and this was a chart that had been, pub that had been published uh, at the old JS trade desk, but we had a head and shoulders pattern here, okay, that launched this giant rally uh, in dollar Turkish lira. And that rally is very well defined by the slope, as you can see. It's been support. Um, the median line has the lower parallel was was decent for support uh, on the 21st of May. All right. But what we're coming into, this is the deepest penetration we've had within this uptrend. OK, so it's very important to watch how the market reacts as it gets up to this median line, because if it starts to roll over, shows signs of topping and puts in maybe a, an outside day reversal or something. I don't know. But, you know, if it starts to act differently. Uh, or maybe even fails before the median line, which would be the best ca best uh, indication yet of something else happening. Then we'll have an opportunity to, uh, you know, potentially put on a short position, and the reward to risk would be absolutely huge, given you know the potential for a broader top. And I will also show you, again, it's going on in a lot of dollar crosses right now, but RSI, okay, at the top. At the top, you had a very drastic divergence with RSI, you know, again, below 65. That's when important tops do tend to happen, um, when you get RSI that low, uh, when price is at a big, a big price high. So RSI now, of course, is testing, uh, as mentioned, the 60 area. Uh, we did not get down and oversold at the low, but, you know, if we can top price top with RSI near 60, uh, that you know, at least would suggest that you have more of a range trade market going on rather than just a raging bull market going on. So something to check out uh, or, you know, consider moving forward. All right. So I wanted to answer a few questions. Uh, Bernard Brinkman asking, June is a bad month for the S&P. What is your view? Right. So let's look at some seasonals. So for one, this is the dollar index real quick. You can see January, February, March, April, May, June. June over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 year period is down every single study. In fact, um, it's been the worst month of the year for the dollar. Uh, in June, it has going back again for, uh, for on a five year basis. Uh, it's tied for the worst on a 10-year basis. It's tied for the worst on a 15-year basis. It's not that terrible longer term, though. So it is typically a crappy month for, uh, for the dollar in June. So that's interesting to note. When we look at the S&P, I'll, I'll look at the Dow just because I – oh, I can look at the S&P, I guess. Actually, I'll look at the Dow because i got more data. All right. Um, you can see here, January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah. So June's bad. As you can see, it's the only month actually that has all red on it on average is down across every, uh, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 and 30. So yes, typically you do get, um, you do get a, a bad, a bad month. Okay. Bad month for uh for june and you know with I've, i know i've talked about it obviously ad nauseum here but you know on the long term chart page you can see we have an absolutely untenable situation when it comes to momentum uh in the s p i mean there's no change here you know these charts obviously are still valid this is a weekly chart so um, let me put this up. All right. So here's the S and P. You know the the one that you really pay attention to, I think, is uh, the slope that I use here that goes off the lows in 2000, July 2010, May 2011, and October 2011. Uh, Bernard, you know, so you're asking what's my view. I mean, my view 
really unchanged for quite a long time. And that's, you know, that the market is on fumes. Um, you know, guessing when it's the, it's going to crash. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody knows if I knew, then I would just buy the correct options and I'd go, go retire. But, uh, seems awfully close. I mean, you know, to rolling over, I'm not sure how much longer this can go on. I mean, you know, the, the bullish sentiment is obviously uh, one thing, but it's everyone's extremely bullish, yet the market hasn't gone up hardly, right? I mean, we're trading at the same levels we were trading at in December as far as the, the you know, the S&P index is concerned. Um, you know, and this last top here, again, does not even, didn't, has yet to make it to resistance that extends, the sliding parallel that extends off highs from last July, last September. We went through it, obviously, at the end of last year. We crossed through it in, uh, what was that, February of this year? February? And then the recent one, we hadn't even, we haven't even made it to that, to that line. So, you know, that's the concept of a space, right? Between a price high and a resistance line. When you can't make it there, it basically, you know, it kind of serves as a warning that you know, the, uh, the, the, you know, the S and P 500 or something, something's not right. I mean, you know, we see it, we've seen it for a while, but it's, it's getting pretty wild. So, you know, my view, I guess on how to trade it, here's the chart I'm looking at right now. Okay. I'll, I'd follow this basically. So this is S&P futures. This is June contract. Um, you have a line drawn off the high day. That line off May 21st and May 22nd. I'm following this line. Okay, that's it. I'd sell, sell at that line with tight stops, and maybe you can catch pretty uh, big waterfall going forward you know it on the other hand if we break below this line that would be a pretty good indication I think Oops. that the market's finally starting to do something I mean you know this is the type of market that frustrates not just bears it fr frustrates bulls too I mean there's I uh, you know it's not like the market's been running away here you know it's absolutely back and forth back and forth so um, the first big indication that something else is really up, that like the, the big drop is actually, or something's underway, would be if you had um, a break of these levels here. Okay, you can see the sliding parallel that goes off these March lows, April lows, May lows. If you got a break below that, which, you know, the rest of the week would be like a break into the 2070s on S&P futures, that would tell you that something is really uh, something different is finally happening as far as the uh, S and P is concerned. Okay, uh, you know, to give you an idea, that's like 50 S and P points. I mean, you know, that would be something on the order of, you know, 600 or so Dow points. So it can certainly happen. Um, you know, but that's that's what I would say is those two things is watch closely. This line here for resistance, again, 2120s, which we've traded into today, uh, and then a break into the 2070s would tell you that something else is up. Okay. <clears throat> um, audio, yeah, Ados, he says, looks like euro dollar 120 noise is fading now, or sorry, parity noise. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, once we start to hear euro dollar 120 as mainstream, then you might want to watch out and go the other way again. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, one market that I just can't seem to grasp at all, besides the S&P, um, is gold. I have no idea what gold is doing. Um, you know, it, the fact that we've tried to turn like multiple times, multiple times and hasn't tells me that, it, you know, we're really at risk for another decline. 
in gold. You know, I mean, I, there, there's not a trade here. Okay, we're coming into support. If I'm trading this, I'm looking to be long and do 1173.50 tight stop or 1160 tight stop. Okay, um, you know, if we get down into this area, then you're talking about looking for short positions. Okay, but at the moment, where this is, this is a range. Um, you know, we still have resistance up at 1220, for example, up the red line, 1220, which would be what late this week. Uh, like, yeah, Friday slash Monday. So NFPs. But yeah, still a range. Um, but certainly there is risk for a bigger move to the downside in gold. Okay. All right. Any other, are there other questions, uh, that you guys want to, want to talk about? Um, as far as other pairs, potentially, you know, other trades. I mean, my focus going forward the next couple days still going to be we're going to reposition long side on the euro. Um, you know, uh, maybe try to get short British pounds. Uh, Dan Wilcox talking about U.S. oil. Yes. Yeah, so crude. Um, again, this is the crude. This is crude. It might look a little different than U.S. oil because U.S. oil is an ETF, and this is the front month futures, which is now July contract. Um, we have a pretty big dip here. Uh, I'd be watching for support. First one, probably about 58.45. Uh, well, maybe 59.05 in, in, in crude futures. Uh, I, let's see, U.S. oil. Let's see U.S. oil because that's what you're asking about specifically. All right. Okay, U.S. oil. All right, so U.S. oil, um, this is that chart. This is the daily chart of U.S. oil. Yeah, ADOS, lot, gold and silver. Lot, yeah, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. When you're lost in something like that, as you know, really right now there's not a whole lot to, to offer at that with gold and with the metals, then forget about it. It'll come back at some point. You know, we'll be... We'll be, uh, we'll see, you know, you know, when it wants to do something special, we'll try to identify it for you. Okay. But don't worry about it now. All right. So here's, um, here's where I'd be looking at in, in U.S. oil. Okay. You've got basically, uh, what I call daily reversal support. Okay. Which, if you're new, you're not sure what that means. What that is, is it's the close for the low day. In this case, this day here. Okay, so that day, the close that day, basically 57.91. All right. Um, that's a level that you're going to want to watch for support now in, in crude. Or this is the ETF, so in U.S. oil. In fact, this is the slope I'm working with here, and it's not nearly as clean as that of the futures market, but the level still applies. So 57, sorry, yeah, 57.91 to potentially 58.60. Okay, uh, as far as support is concerned for. Uh, for U.S. oil and 58.60 is just simply form of resistance. So, you know, I still like, you know, U.S. oil potentially higher, crude oil potentially higher with the response that we had again on the futures chart. You can see the futures chart being a little cleaner as you have this low here uh, on January. You've got the high here on, in February, this high February 9th and this low. This chart, which I posted last week on the day of it when we were right down here, um, you know, we caught that that caught perfectly and you have absolutely beautiful trade around the median line. So that's why, you know, I'm still constructive on crude, uh, moving forward. Okay. Do I buy it now? No, probably not. But for the futures market right now, again, July contract looking at 5768 to come into play potentially over the next one to two days. If you get that, you might have, a heck of a long opportunity in crude. Okay. Um, so there's your spot.
Okay. So again, 57.68 in July futures and 57.91 in um, in U.S. oil, the ETF. Okay. And you know, you can kind of think if this were to play out, you know, if we did hold this level and continue off of it, again, where's your objectives? Well, there is a big trend line to watch out for, which is slightly higher. Um, it's, you know, more or less going to come in with the high at 6245, uh, you know, depending on when you get there, obviously, or if we get there. But, you know, if we do break out of this, you know, you could envision this as a consolidation pattern. OK, the consolidation can go on for a little bit, but eventually an objective on this is going to be up near 68. OK, for crude oil. So we'll see. Um, again, kind of important that we hold the low last week, obviously, especially given the futures chart, as I mentioned. but. Daniel, just watch that 5791 level, man. That's the big that's the big level for support as far as US oil is concerned. All right. All right. Any other things uh that you guys want to get to here? I'll give a quick quick summary. Can we check how pound QE sure? So still the beast, right? Uh Oops, I didn't mean to check. Go there. That's stupid. All right. Pound Kiwi. All right, so Pound Kiwi. Again, long term chart, head and shoulders breakout. Target is up near 243.80, so almost 244. The path to get there, probably going to be pretty sloppy. In fact, before we look at this, I do want to show you a chart from back in the day. This is actually a pound CAD. Um, and pound CAD, hold on. These really big long term breakouts, okay, can be absolutely awesome to ride if you're like a long term trader and you feel like you know you don't care if your position moves around a ton um but like for example here's a pound cad position okay we had the breakout this was back in 2010 to basically 2013 you had a three-year sideways trend or sideways range once we broke out to new highs okay here false breakout here finally broke out we had some serious you had some pretty serious um and this is one week okay these are weekly charts so one week bars so you had some pretty big you know reversals in the process uh it wasn't the cleanest ride okay so just keep that in mind uh as we look at this pound kiwi chart okay all right so pound kiwi First of all, here's the weekly, right? We have pressed into a big sliding parallel, all right? Uh, as far as getting into this position, what I would want to do here, just like Pound Cad did back in the day with all of its back and forth action, I would be looking for... Uh, you know, a retest support, if you will. We had the first retest, you remember, 208, which we'd highlighted back here. But look at that. If you use this one, this was actually the fork that we had used originally down here. You remember that? And we kind of gave up on it after we lost it here, which obviously. Uh, you know, it's a bummer, but it's okay. Um, you might want to watch this, okay? Stand deep. So use this fork here on these, what's that, the March 26th low, the April 1st high, and April 10th low, and see if you can, because the market, what's, what's big about this is that the market has not just respected the supports there, but you can see that we've been trading around, you know, at the median line as well. 
right? So this is a slope worth following in order to position for the bigger for another thrust higher in pound in pound kiwi. Um, you know, if we look at if we line this up with horizontal support, if you will, okay. Uh, you know, you might be able to get 209.40, okay, maybe a little higher over the next few days. You know, we'll see. Uh, again, I'm not personally that keen on a bullish pound position, right? You know, in, in the at the moment, again, it's um, it's kind of it broke out and then it didn't hold the levels that it kind of needed to in order to be bullish. So, uh, kind of back looking lower in pound, and again, that's that pound Aussie trade that I showed you uh, earlier is, you know, something that could be really special. So I'm not that keen on this, but if pound Kiwi to the break, you know, this breakout is something you really want to play, uh, then yeah, I would be following this line here, Sandeep, as support, okay, moving forward. All right. Um, which brings me to something I just thought of. Oh, yeah, Aussie Kiwi. So this is... Aussie Kiwi now is threatening another big move to the upside, right? <clears throat> Here's a chart that we had put up, I think, a couple weeks ago, and we showed the former resistance in Aussie Kiwi. And sure enough, we got a nice pullback off of it. Didn't quite get the median line though, or the lower parallel, but now Aussie is back pushing above here. So if Aussie can establish above this level, which was so precise as support, and so precise as resistance multiple times, then you're, this line you look for to become support at some point, and maybe it's over here next week, uh, and maybe it's over here. I don't know. Maybe that's over here at the end of the month. But Aussie Kiwi again speaks to the Aussie strength versus Kiwi uh, speaks to out Aussie outperformance. Speaks to maybe pound Aussie downside, maybe Kiwi yen downside. You see what I'm saying? Um, but so big behavior change in Aussie Kiwi, uh, obviously Euro Pound 2, which we covered. So, um, all right. Hope that helps. All right, everyone. Thank you a ton for attending. I need to get this uh, up and archived so that you all can watch and the others can watch that can't attend. Uh, but, again, thank you so much. Um, you know, June's off to a good start, um, you know, as far as trading skills trading goes uh and i'll well, try to keep try to keep that going i guess for the rest of the month right all right okay <laughs> because it was as dollar swiss oh it's time okay next time you know what real quick dollar swiss so dollar swiss here you go just follow these man okay you've got this downslope, actually, we just hit it today. What do you know? Hold off. So dollar Swiss right here. You could get resistance up here a little bit. Support could come in near 92.15. Okay. Um, I think dollar Swiss might be leading the way lower in the U.S. dollar. Uh, you just look at the performance, okay, of dollar Swiss recently. U.S. dollars at all time, or not all time, but recently at multi-year highs. Dollar Swiss, though, has been making trend lows uh, basically since February. In fact, each rally has been a little more feeble. And, you know, the advance, uh, you know, is really focused on in, in the weekend piece here, right, with RSI. Okay, so go over this if you haven't yet. Um, but it talks about the potential for a big downside move in Dollar Swiss, right, because basically you have daily RSI now on the bear the bear side okay you have failures in rsi up near 60 all right as far as a price a price level is concerned you know we kind of we hit one today i mean we hit this parallel all right the bigger one is probably this one um you know if we get up there over the next few days but yeah dollar swiss looks like uh it may be leading the way lower within the downtrend all right. Okay. So now this time, that's really it. I'm uh, going to take off again. Uh, have a great rest of the week and be out later with the post as always. All right. Thanks again. Bye.